Hey everyone. So I really spontaneously just wanted to come on and talk about two things that Spirit brought to me. And I have, don't have any specific downloads or anything. It's just two things. One is victim mode and the other one is what exactly does it mean to do the work? And I don't even have anything prepared. I'm just going to let Spirit kind of work through me and use whatever comes uh, through. But there's something about these two things and actually thoroughly understanding them that is crucial in order to actually stop repeating these cycles that we keep repeating over and over again. We leave a situation thinking that we stop the cycle just to meet another person to repeat that same cycle with because you haven't healed that aspect of yourself that uh, created... Uh, an interaction with somebody to manifest that cycle to begin with. So if you don't heal that aspect of yourself, it's just going to continuously come forward. Even if you say, even if it's come forward in relationships, let's say, and you say, I'm never dating again. I'm never going to be in a relationship again. And then it manifests in, it's the same trauma manifesting in a work environment or a family environment. <laughs> it's like, it's going to come back to haunt you as my grandfather would say. <laughs> But um, yeah, so that's where doing the work really does come in. But if we sink into victim mode, we can't do the work because the work consists of facing our shadow. And <clears throat> it's funny because the shadow is getting tricky. Like our ego is really convincing. So we can... Like the way you can gauge if you can trust something, some information, some thoughts, these um, things that are coming into your mind about maybe how you should move in your life or how you feel about your life. Like the way you can trust what's coming through is how do you feel when you receive it? So if you're feeling resistant, you're feeling like, I can't stand this situation. I can't stand my job. I can't stand my relationship, whatever it is. And you're um, feeling that resistance. Everything that comes in is just going to be your ego trying to run away from actually facing the problem. Which is, why can't I feel peace right now in this moment? Like, what is it about this situation that triggers me so I can't feel peaceful right now? It's like my kids, like when they get irritated with each other. And they always do this thing where they're like, so-and-so is looking at me. They won't stop looking at me. <laughs> I'm like, if you didn't care about the fact that they were looking at you, if you could really just not care, train yourself not to care or figure out why you care. You know what I mean? Like, I really have these conversations with my kids, but it's the same thing in adults. Like, we are just grown little babies that have never really faced or been able to heal. And then we've just accumulated more trauma over time that we haven't healed. So we're even more immature than we were as kids because we've never, ever grown from it. And we've just continued to repeat cycles. And now we've normalized trauma. Like we literally maneuver through our lives like people pleasing or being blind to the fact that you're being used. <laughs> like, like all types of shit like that. And it's normalized to us. So we feel like this is like, normal behavior. I'll use myself as an example. When from, from the time I was zero to eight, I lived with my mom. And at the time she was a drug addict and she was just going through a tough time. So me and my brother were severely neglected, right? But you couldn't have told me that I was living some crazy bad life as a child, because to me it was normal. So whenever I got taken away from my mother and put in a different situation I still felt abandoned because I was like no like I want to be where it feels normal even though it was a toxic situation it felt normal to me and I, you know that's a whole other <laughs> story in itself um, and it's very complex but um, it's the point of the matter is is we normalize trauma we normalize our own patterns and behaviors in our brain so somebody can tell you the facts of your situation until they're blue in the face but if you don't consciously see it from that perspective and you really can't get out of this character you're playing and see what you're doing and observe what you're doing in your life 
um, if you can't do that, it's going to be very difficult to change because you're not even going to be able to admit that you have the problem or you'll admit an aspect of it. Maybe you'll admit that you have a projection, like you're projecting in some way, you're angry or you go into depression or something. You'll admit you have that, but the, the actual issue, you don't want to admit that it exists because you've normalized this trauma that you just have always been this way. So what's the big deal? Like, this is my personality, right? Like a lot of people like to say, um, no, like I'm just bitchy. I'm just like, whatever. Like, no, that's just something that you don't want to face and heal. And because of that, um, there's a shadow side of your personality that you choose to operate out of instead of coming from a space that's maybe more loving, understanding, accepting, patient, um, we all, I'm not, like, I've gone through this, guys. Like, I've had all the <laughs> shit to face, too. So there's no shame in owning your shit. Like, if you see something in yourself, say it out loud and really own it. Don't just say, ooh, I, like, I didn't like the way I just did that, but I don't really want to talk about it. Like, no, but talk about it. Like, say it out loud. Actually tell somebody. Because it's like a lot of shame and guilt build up in people and they have no idea it's even there. And so when you say things out loud or if you say it to another person, that's a huge step in momentum in the direction of healing that trauma <clears throat> because you bring more recognition to it. And then you're bringing that energy more alive in this space. And once you bring it up, you're able to release it. But you never, if you never bring it up, if you never want to look at it, if you never want to talk about it, if you never even want to put the effort forth to look at what you're doing and how you interact on a moment to moment basis in your environment with the people that you're around, with your children, with your parents, with your partner, whatever it is. Um, yeah, if you never want to actually check yourself out, um, you're never going to change. So a lot of people just don't think they, they don't think they have any issues and they just slide along in their comfort zone. And a lot of those people are being humbled right now because the comfort zone is just like non-existent. It's like, Hey, here's your shit. You want to face it? No. Okay. Here it comes back around again. You want to face it? No. Okay. And it doesn't matter how many times you run away from it or how many times you want to deny it exists, it's going to come back around. But if you do face it, you're going to go through the, the purge. You're going to go through the uncomfortable feelings, bringing those things up in order to release them. This is the work, guys. This is the work. When spirit and you hear spiritual teachers talk about the work and you got to do the work. Nobody can do the work for you. You can't run away and escape to somebody who makes you feel good. And then life is good now. No, no, it's not going to work. I know you're out there trying and please let me know if it's worked for any of you, but it doesn't work for me. and <laughs> I haven't seen it work for anyone else. So you got to do the work yourself. You really have to admit that you have shit to face for one. I think most people are in denial, like a lot of people, especially people who are completely have their head in the sand and what's going on these days, like they're in complete denial that there's even another way to look at life other than what the matrix has provided and program has programming has provided for them. So yeah, it's it's going to be it's going to be tough out there if you're not willing to do the work. Um recognize that you have shitty behavior and there is never going to be a time where you're perfect and there's not another layer to peel back of healing and facing something that you could do better. When you know better, you do better, you know? And I tell my kids that all the time like if you know something and you have learned something, then that that's like it's good to fall and it's good to make that mistake. It's good to let your children make that mistake because that mistake will make it so they never want to do that again. And we all remember those times where, oh, like we've been spelling a word wrong this whole time, like a basic example. <laughs> and then all of a sudden you see it spelled correctly and oh shit, I've been spelling it, like embarrassing myself, spelling it wrong this whole time. Like what? <laughs> So now you'll never do it wrong again, right? You know those types of things. Um, we all go through that. But that's um, 
that's how this all works. Like you have to get to that recognition. You have to be able to fall and that's okay because I can find the gift in all the contrasts because every single time I fall, there is a gift. And if I don't sink into victim mode, I can, I'll be able to see that gift because I'm humble enough to say, oh shit, I fucked up. What, how can I change this? How can I not do the same exact thing I just did last time this happened or last time something similar to this happened, which is usually run back to your relationship. Just continue to go to the job you hate, <laughs> not try to do anything to change the energy up. Just continuously repeat your patterns. This monotonous living the same fucking day every day for the rest of your life. How do you stay in the matrix, people? I don't understand it. But I'm here to help. I'm here to help. I don't do this for the money. <laughs> okay, guys? I, I don't wish being stuck in the matrix, feeling enslaved emotionally, physically, mentally. Like, I don't wish that shit on anyone. And I know what it feels like to be in it. So I, because I figured a few things out and I'm like trucking along the way and figuring out this healing process, I'm sharing it with others. And that's what's going to happen to you when you start to heal. You're going to feel called in some way to shine your light. It doesn't have to be speaking to people. You could just be going to work every day planting seeds. Like you could just be raising your kids, planting those seeds and showing, and showing your kids to acquire skills, not to go to college and get in debt. To acquire as many skills as they can so they have so many different in streams of income. They become business owners before they're even the age of 20. And that's what we should be living in. That our economy should be flourishing. Because we have <clears throat> the answers, but it's our corrupt system that refuses to implement them. And wants to invert everything. Everything that is organic, everything that could make us thrive is inverted intentionally to, to stop the expansion of consciousness. But that shit ain't working because there's people like me, thousands of us out there that are literally helping anchor the light for everybody to raise their awareness, raise their vibration, raise the collective consciousness and you can see how the entire shadow is being uh, revealed to our entire world right now. So it's very obvious that it's working. Because when the shit starts to come up, it's because the light is being shined in those dark, ugly places. In the corners where all the cobwebs are. We are shining the light there right now. And I know it doesn't feel good for everybody that was sitting in their comfort zone and thought they could just live out the rest of their life there. Stop wasting your time because you're going to cross over and you're going to realize you just wasted a lot of time, even though time doesn't exist because everything's happening at simultaneously. You're going to realize you wasted an incarnation where you could have truly advance a lot. So if you get triggered, if you get... um. If you get sparked by a seed that somebody is planting inside of you and you say you feel like you resonate and there's some truth with that, follow the nudges, follow your intuition because it will not steer you wrong. Your curiosity will lead you down a path of healing and breakdown and healing and breakdown and you will never ever turn back because you can't unknow or unfeel what you just felt. If you, if somebody has triggered it inside of you, this ascension, this, this, what is it? There's a word I'm looking for and it's not coming up. Activated. If somebody has activated that within you, if you have been listening or you've heard or you've been in touch with a light worker who has really activated something within you where you're like, holy shit, there's something different about the world and I want to know more about it. And then you start going down the rabbit hole and your whole entire life changes. And then you're set on fire and you actually fucking love life now. And everything's changing and it's all shitty and all amazing all at the same time because that's how the process is. You can't dodge the darkness. That's the work, people. That's when you know you're on the path. 
And then you just have to keep chipping away, checking yourself, not wrecking yourself, and doing the work, looking at your shit, admitting you have faults, many, many of them. The more perfect you think you are, the more faults you have. Trust me, I was a perfectionist, recovering workaholic, overachiever. I've had to face a lot of shit. And I've had to let go of all of it, all those things I reached or reached outside of myself for to be externally validated, drop them all. Thought I found, well, the love of my life and about to get a house and all that shit, drop it all. And guess what? If you can still find that spark inside of you, once you've been stripped down from everything you thought you fucking wanted, the matrix told you you wanted, and you can still find that spark. You fucking did it and you're well on your way and you're going to continue to peel back the layers because there is no end to this process. We are infinitely expanding. You'll know when you're done in this incarnation, but you're still going to have another thing to do, another mission, another w a form of expanding some way in this universe to create, to, to add to the collective infinitely expanding, which is all we've ever been doing. And I know that's a little bit complex, but really, if you just let it activate you let it like sit with you you don't have to like get it you don't have to accept it i'm not asking you to accept anything i'm saying if it resonates and it's something inside of you is saying yes then let it be take what resonates leave what doesn't i'm just here to be a channel through from spirit that's it I, because I'm called to come out to my vehicle where I have a quiet place away from my kids and tell people like, this is all the ways I fucked up in life, but I kind of figured out how to heal from it. And if, if I can do it, you can do it. Trust me, you can do it. Anyone can do this. The work is actually being able to own the fact that you're not perfect and figuring out where those little imperfections, and it's not really imperfections, it's just this trauma you accumulated that wasn't even your fucking fault. Somebody probably projected it onto you and it wasn't their fault either because it got projected onto them. And you see these generational cycles that we are here to heal for our entire family. When you heal it, you heal it for your mother and you heal it for your children. Okay, when you heal it, you heal it for the whole line. That's why it's like <clears throat> that one meme I know. I can't, I think it's Denzel Washington or something said it. It's like, this is no joke. Like people in your own family, you're out here healing their generational curses and they're talking mess on you. Like it's no joke, this healing process. And you have to sit there and be at peace in a forgiving heart and not really care. That's where I got to. I just don't really care because I know that whatever anybody could be projecting onto me in a negative way is just a space where they haven't healed, where they're just projecting. And guess what? If I uh, protect myself and put a uh, wrap myself in light and, and pray before I go places and set my intention of what I want to experience in a moment to moment basis, I don't have to worry about that because when I'm sovereign and I'm standing in my light, nothing can touch me because I understand that that person is just projecting and because they're coming from a place of pain and I don't take that shit personal. Ain't nothing to take personal about it because it's nothing to do with you. It's just them in pain. Any type of bully, any type of Karen is just in an immense amount of pain. And when we realize that we stop thinking us versus them and we really start thinking about healing, that is the focus, healing. <sighs> but yeah, guys, I'm losing light. It's starting to get dark outside. <laughs> um, that's what Spirit wanted to bring through today. I love you so much, and um, I hope to get on here more. Um, have an amazing evening. <laughs>